graduated from medical school. I went to work in a hospital called Kenyatta Hospital in Nairobi and I was admitting patients one Christmas Eve and doing a post-admission ward round the next morning. I realized this ward was full of HIV. 60 out of 75 patients just had HIV or HIV-related illness. And I felt, I'm a conduit. I'm just here signing death certificates. This is not my job. When I, I took the Hippocratic Oath, I promised to protect. I promised to heal. My head of department put the challenge in my head by asking me, what are you going to do about it? Our students, many of whom could have gone and become physicians or very distinguished lawyers or uh, entrepreneurs, are here because they believe in giving back to society. And they believe that with the resources invested in them, in the wonderful colleges and universities that have brought them here, they want to use that to serve society in a unique and creative way. I contacted my old friends, Medicine Sans Frontier. I asked them, is there anything you're doing about HIV, any programs where you'd like some volunteers? And they said, yes, uh, we need some, a volunteer doctor to go to Malawi and set up the HIV program there. I said, I'm it. We have about 900 students enrolled total in the School of Public Health. Almost a half of them have medical degrees and are here to get Masters of Public Health. We have students from over 50 countries at the present time and probably from 25 or 30 states. Imagine there is no precedent for this in human history. 14 million orphans under the age of it became clear to me that I needed some extra skills. In medical school, you don't learn um, too much about statistics, how to record your data, and to make sense of the numbers in a population way, not in an individual way. I figured I really need to go back to school, but this time I'm going to do public health. And you're humbled to see how much these students have sacrificed to come here and how much they want to do with their lives. This is a very scary time. A lot of people are really concerned about this. I mean, what else can go wrong? Like I said before, it's very difficult to speculate as to what might happen in the future. Oh, you're good. Oh, you're good. Yeah. This year, I am getting a master's in public health. I also have a new baby, uh, Zoe. She's wonderful. She's five months. Oh, gosh, what else? I do. There are research requirements from the Masters in Public Health, so part of the time while I'm taking classes, I'm also pursuing a research interests. So I also uh, do have a part-time job uh, on the weekends and some nights as a physician. Public health is still a very underdeveloped area in China, and I can just go back to apply what I have learned here to just um, better serve my homeland, my country, and my people. In this way, I still hope to improve the health for people all over the world. No student is typical. Each student has a diverse set of backgrounds and a diverse set of things that make him or her light up. And it's a matter of trying to find what that is for that student and really push that button, you know, and let them give a voice to whatever it was that brought them to the School of Public Health in the first place. Oh, I find it very exciting to get out and have a hands-on experience working with sediments. The sediment cores really provide insights about environmental pollution. These are students who are learning all about exposure assessment in the field, how you measure these things, how you deal with people, many of them disadvantaged, how you talk with them about this kind of research, how you deal with statistics, very complicated statistics, how you deal with genetics, because we're trying to unravel the integration of genetics and exposures to uncover the ultimate influences on disease. 
In the last five years, we really turned our attention to Boston, our own community. Wherever you have disparities in income, disparities in education, disparities in access to healthy housing, you will have these inequities that have a health implication. I took the opportunity to travel with Doctors Without Borders to Angola. That was in the fall of 2002 to work on a large-scale nutritional program for kids. I returned home and worked as a pediatrician here in the States for about nine months and then returned to the field again, this time to Sudan, Darfur, also working with Doctors Without Borders in a similar um, nutritional therapeutic feeding center. And it didn't take long for me being doc in the field to come to the conclusion that one really needed to take a public health approach to really make a difference in those sorts of resource poor settings. What we're starting to do is look at um, the health impacts of uh, women who are trafficked to India for sex. Most of these women are very vulnerable, they're from rural areas. We like to understand more of the health outcomes that are involved with sex trafficking, so that way once we have that data we can advocate for greater health services to serve these women. All of our students go out to make change and they usually make it at the highest levels of policy and of professional practices. They're leaders of their associations, they're health ministers of their countries, they become commissioners of public health. Mexico is my home country and uh, I came here to receive training and then to return to apply what I learned. When you come to the School of Public Health, you have the potential and the school helps you to bring it out. Uh, and uh, certainly I went back uh, sure of my knowledge with uh, the energy to provide this leadership. In order to train the best leaders, you have to attract the best students. And one of my great regrets is that we do not have the resources to make it possible for many of the best students, both within this country and various communities, and in developing countries around the world. Uh, without the Taplin Scholarship, I probably would not be able to uh, pursue studying um, violence against women. The scholarship allowed me to stay in school, get the skills that I wanted, because when you're a doctor from Sub-Saharan Africa who earns $200 in a month, and you're being asked for $40,000 in a year. You, you cannot even imagine what that sum of money is like, you know? It's critical that our students can, can contemplate completing their studies here and then making a choice of a career in public service and not feeling compelled to go into some lucrative but less uh, important field in terms of advancing the public's health. Right now, I'm working on HIV prevention methods called microbicides, which are a female-initiated way to control the epidemic. My hope is that my gift will produce a multiply effect. Uh, start off with one or two students who in turn does something of, of value. A visiting committee members one time told me this is God's work. Students are just unbelievable and they're very enthusiastic about their work. You know that they're the ones that are really going to help the community as far as clean water, um, uh, nutritional issues, um, diseases. diseases, I mean uh, that they're the ones that, that are going to be going there and um, just a little bit of help tremendously helps the communities there. I want uh, my life to be healthier, I want my children's life to be healthier, and I want the people around the world to have a healthier existence, both mentally and physically, emotionally, and when you've seen with recent epidemics, uh, it becomes uh, very clear that uh, we're all connected. And I think the School of Public Health uh, gets us all connected uh, 
in a healthier way. Harvard, as we would say in the African sense, Harvard did not really assist me. Harvard has assisted Africa because you've given, Harvard has given me the tools to be able to go back and help my own people in Africa. And every time I, I, I see something good happen, a patient does better and they're like, oh, thank you, doctor, thank Harvard. They're the ones who gave me the money, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to do it. But going back to do public health and do this work, it's not for me. It's for those little babies who are held in my arms, I'm telling you. Those little sweet things who just look at you and, where is my mommy? How'd you tell him you're, we've just buried your mommy? That's who we're doing it for. <laughs>